uh, for some of you, I see lots of young faces and I'm very happy to see lots of young people. Sorry for the first rows. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, the, um, <coughs> the, um, the point is that uh, some may worry, and they should, but some may worry that they don't know enough mathematics. Okay. No one knows enough mathematics. In fact, no one knows any mathematics. Let me make the demonstration of this uh, claim. Uh, one of my uh, uh, favorite heroes uh, is John von Neumann. Like many, many applied mathematicians, there is John von Neumann and the others. Uh, uh, von Neumann, while well, maybe for the young people, you, you may not be aware what kind of monster he was, uh, but this, this is a guy who started in algebra and, uh, very, and questions in logic, and then uh, invented uh, one uh, uh, formulation of quantum mechanics, invented game theory, was working as uh, a scientific advisor with the US Air Force, and started working in fluid mechanics in uh, climate uh, dynamics, in uh, fluid mechanics as I, fluid mechanics and gas dynamics, recognized the incredible difficulties that were associated with gas dynamics and fluid mechanics, and just invented computers in order to make computations. So when I say invented computers, that's a little bit too, uh, uh, too fast. Uh, but he, he uh, certainly uh, uh, synthesized the uh, logic which is still being used in modern computers. Uh, so that's von Neumann, and uh, quite a few other things. Uh, so von Neumann, at the end of the years 1920s, was being asked, how much mathematics do you know? And uh, von Neumann would always answer immediately any question. Well, first he had a mind which was probably working a little bit faster than the others, but also he had thought about the questions, all, uh, you know, about all possible questions in advance. So his immediate answer was 28%, okay? So, of course, that's a joke, but it's an indication that someone like von Neumann, who was a uh, you know, huge, huge spectrum, uh, didn't know more, uh, uh, didn't know one third of mathematics at the, a, uh, at the end of the uh, 1920s, which means that you take any mathematicians, you know, with all kinds of awards and strange awards and all these those things. If he knows one percent of mathematics, that's a huge spectrum. Okay, so end of the uh, end of the uh, the proof of my statement. No one knows any mathematics, so you can uh, relax. Doesn't mean for the uh, those who are still following classes that you can't learn mathematics, uh, but. Uh, we should uh, we should be uh, very very conscious that we just learn a little bit. Uh, the, the other thing is uh, another thing by von Neumann is that, and this is uh, I'm getting closer to my talk now. Uh, the uh, von Neumann once uh, once said that you never understand mathematics, you get used to it. Okay, so which is a very deep. Uh, uh, a deep sentence. So indeed, you have to grow some familiarity with the notions that you're using and reusing, uh, build up your own intuition, which has nothing to do with the explanation that you, you, you have received. Uh, so it takes time. So some may do it a little bit quicker than the others, but usually it takes some time. So this is a good excuse for using some notions that uh, you have not been used to. And uh, uh, I'll start about discussing about those main field games. I've given already at, at, at least twice a talk on minfield games here, uh, but there is no way I can start. Uh, I can uh, I can start without recalling what they are all about. So sorry for uh, the few people that already heard part of this lecture. Um, I, I just sorry about that. Uh, I just mentioned this is a. Uh, a joint project that started more than 10 years ago with a, co a colleague and a, a friend of mine, Jean-Michel Lasserie, and he's an uh, unusual mathematician. He's not a professional mathematician. I mean, he used to be a professional mathematician and then uh, went into the uh, uh, private industry and uh, has still been working on the side, uh, building up strange ideas and strange concepts. This is a very, very interesting guy, without whom all this story wouldn't have been possible. Um, <coughs> so this is the outline. 
uh, introduction, a really simple example, a general structure and a three part of your case, that's going to be tough mathematically. So if you need to catch up on your sleep, that's going to be a good time to sleep. Uh, overview and perspectives, then I'll, uh, I'll give some examples. But then I want to spend some time about a much more recent application of Minfield Games, which concern the field that is nowadays called big data. You know, that digital data all around us. I hate the terminology big data, and I insist upon this terminology meaningful data. Uh, because in the end, it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you have large sets of data or high dimensional data. What matters is the meaning you want to extract from this data. Uh, and by meaning, this I really mean meaning. Okay, so <coughs> here comes the introduction. So um, it's a new class of models that we started in the early 2000s, uh, which, is, uh, which aims at uh, describing the collective behavior of a large number of agents. So two ideas. It's like game theory. You have lots of people. And uh, lots of agents, players, all of them are small in the sense that a single player is not going to influence a lot the outcome, the overall situation. And we are going to uh, describe the behavior of these huge collections of agents, economical agents, for instance, data bits in uh, data science. Uh, those uh, agents, we are going to use, uh, we are going to uh, look at them in an average sense. And the average sense is borrowed from statistical mechanics and statistical phoenix, physics uh, through the classical notions of mean field theories. Uh, as we will see, unfortunately, it requires new mathematical theories. Fortunately, and fortunately. Fortunately, because this means that uh, 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 mathematicians are not going to be unemployed. And uh, unfortunately, because it means it's difficult. Um, <coughs> it has lots of applications, numerical applications, numerous applications in economics, finance, social network, crowd motions, and so on. Um, <coughs> yeah, so the, uh, I w certainly want to point out uh, that uh, the uh, uh, Wang, Keynes, and Malame in 2006 introduced a completely independently particle class of mental games models. And in fact, the first time someone proposed a minfield game model without calling it a minfield game model without writing any mathematics, uh, mathematics was in a paper in economics, in macroeconomics. It's a very famous paper by Crussell and Smith uh, in macroeconomics. It's a very famous paper. It's also very famous because I believe that essentially no one understood that paper at, the, at that time. And uh, Bob Lucas in Chicago from a Nobel Prize of Economics uh, uh, at one point uh, gave me this paper and told me, Pierre-Louis, I'm sure this is a minfield game. No one understands this paper. Can you just explain to us what's in this paper? Indeed, it's a perfect example of a minfield game. Uh, and indeed, we, uh, we now have a, a, a paper which uh, explains this uh, kind of magic that they were using at that time, uh, Crystal Smith. Uh, and this paper involved Benjamin Moll, who is a former student, of an economics guy, a former student of, uh, of Bob Lucas, and he's now a professor in Princeton. It's um, a research community in expansion. I, I would say that last year there were four international workshops uh, on uh, Minfield Games. Um, doesn't prove much because you have so many workshops, but anyway, still a sign of some activity. Um, it's a, a research community in mathematics, economics, finance, also in some aspects of computer science, communica communication networks, and so on. Um, I want to, to point out that, for instance, Minfin games are being taught in uh, graduate in uh, uh, graduate classes uh, in economics in Princeton. Just to give an example that, uh, which for me is uh, completely incredible because it seems so hard mathematically. But anyway, that's the case. Uh, there are, of course, uh, written references, but I want to point out, especially to the young crowd or to the old crowd for different reasons, uh, that if you want to have a more detailed presentation of, what's, uh, of what we are doing in that field, you can download my uh, courses um, at Collège de France, which are videotaped in a very professional way. So this is really something that you can use to work. And uh, of course, this is four times 18 hours of mathematics. 
bottom line is that I really recommend downloading this if you have trouble sleeping. Five minutes of any of those tapes, and I guarantee uh, sleep, maybe with nightmares, but at least sleep. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Uh, as I mentioned, it's a combination of mean field theories, which are classical in physics and mechanics, and the notion of Nash equilibria in game theory. I will have to remind you what, is, uh, what are Nash equilibria. So what you can see that this, uh, those Nash equilibria uh, are really for continuum of small players. I'll explain this to, uh, in a minute. Uh, let me emphasize this fact, because that's a critic that can be made on this type of model, is that what we really assume in addition to the fact that, one, there are lots of players. Two, each player is small, comparatively to the crowd. The third assumption, and that's it, is that it's a rational player, which means that it tries to minimize, I mean, economists and finance people always maximize. I mean, mathematicians are always minimized, so just change the sign. It's the same operation. So, they are trying to optimize, to control a criterion that depends on the others. That's the game theory uh, part of it. So rational, in my sense, doesn't mean any kind of philosophical, it doesn't have any kind of philosophical meaning. It just means that it tries to optimize something. Uh, it's unfortunately a huge class of moles for reasons which are quite obvious, is that agents tend to choose. And when they lose their ability to choose, they become particles. And in fact, you should have, as particular cases, just uh, uh, forbidding, uh, forbidding uh, them to uh, choose, and they become particles, and you should recover lots of classical models in mechanics and physics. <coughs> 